Why do I have on white? I forgot I was doing this. Look at this life. Now look like a big banana boat. <laughs> <laughs> We're live. Oh, it says live. We're live. I don't care. Okay. I still look fat. I'll do this. Wait, we're on. We are very on. <laughs> we are very, very on. Can I say hello? Hi. Hi. They <laughs> <Yes>, said hello. <laughs> Any questions? Hi, I'm so good. What's your name? <laughs> um, Lyric. Maria. Cliffany. Sharon. Rima. And I'm Bon Trisha. <laughs> And Ignazio is coming. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta got a guy. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? Well, hello everyone. Who's talking first? Why am I talking first? They say I'm talking first. So I pass it on to Issa. This is Ignacio. 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 Hello. <laughs> All right, it's okay. You're talking first. Say good morning. Hi everyone. Good morning. Um so we're here today to answer makeup questions, give advice on building your career as a makeup artist. So if you have any question, all you have to do right now is type your question in the comment section so we can see it here, then we can answer your question. They can also ask the questions like we did last time on mm -hmm. Instagram. Oh, okay. Um, we can't see me. We can't see anything, Dana. <laughs> anything that's wrong is Dana's fault. <laughs> okay. Amelia, say something. Everybody, this is Amelia. She's in talking. Hi, everyone. You said that already. <laughs> <laughs> what else would you like to say, Amelia? Any questions you all want to know, just ask. Don't kick. She's kicking me on my foot. <laughs> just because I said she should ask. Simone, what do you have to say? Um, nothing. Just if you have any questions at all, it would be a good time to get them in now. You can ask questions on Instagram as well. On your Instagram, Miss B? I don't know. On whose Instagram? I don't know. No, on Issa Ken's Instagram. Yes, they can. Yeah, so you can ask questions on Issa Ken's Instagram, and then we'll read it, and we'll answer. Makeup-related questions, business makeup-related questions, stuff like that. Okay. You can ask me their business, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the questions are here. The questions are there. What's oh. the first question? Um, hello, Auntie Patricia. Well, hello. <laughs> let me take off my glasses. I can't read without it. So let um, me see. What's the first question? Okay. Let's see. We have we don't have any questions yet. Oh, just a whole thing. Hi. Everybody, hi, 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 hi. Hi, hi. hi to Hi to um Alicia Wright. Hello. Hey Alicia. Hey Alicia. Um, How are you? I can't pronounce some of y'all names. She could say that. Hi, Ekanem. Ekanem. <laughs> well, hello. Whatever she just said. Um, who else? There's Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Is that Daisy? Um, there's Sharice. There is a whole bunch of names I can't pronounce without sounding like I'm cussing. <laughs> um. Hello. Okay, so we have a question. What is the question? And the first question is from Ekanem, and she says, how do we stop makeup from running during the summer? Where do you live? Um, Nigeria, maybe? Probably Nigeria. Probably Nigeria. Are you running when you have your makeup on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do you stop your, Niger your, your Nigeria from running? How do you stop your makeup from running in the summertime? That has a lot to do with number one. What do you wear as your foundation? Is your foundation a liquid foundation? Is it a cream foundation? How do you put it on? What do you put it on with? But the number one thing to use, first of all, would be a primer. Um, I'm not talking about an eye or a lip primer. I'm talking about a face primer. Um, the face primer, what it will do, it will lay your sebaceous or your oil glands dormant for several hours so you won't produce any oil. However, you can't put it on with your fingers because then you're activating the oil or the sebaceous gland. So the whole purpose of putting it on in the first place, you erase it if you use your fingers to apply it. So apply it with um, your brush, put your foundation on, set your foundation with a powder. 
a lot of you are not using powder with your foundation and that's where you're having a problem I don't care even if you do it in a cold weather if you're not setting your foundation with a powder your foundation will not last on your face so you have to set it with a powder use a primer and use the sides of your brush and press and place it in place and it will stay okay so the next question is from Ms. Patricia and um, Khadija is asking, highlighting under the eyes before foundation or after, which do you prefer? Well, personally, how I do it, when, some, when I highlight or when I teach to highlight, I prefer it to look as clean and as natural as possible. You want it to appear as if the person is lifted, that's the whole purpose of highlighting underneath the eyes. So what I do, I put my personal color foundation on first, all over, even underneath the eyes. And then I apply the highlighted color on top of it, underneath the eyes. You set that area with a lighter powder, and then you set the darker area with a darker powder. And you find that that will be best. But the direction that you take it is very important. When you highlight underneath the eyes, you have to do under and up. So what you're doing, you're creating an illusion of lifting. So that's the whole purpose of highlighting. It has to go 90 degrees down, pretty much to about down here to the nose. Sweep 45 degrees cross onto the cheekbone. Because the whole entire area is to make the eyes look younger and to make the cheekbones or your zygomatic bone look as if they're lifted. And then you want to set that area with powder. Awesome. So the next question is from Leslie, and she says that she was watching a clip last night, and you stated that even when contouring the nose, you should blend into the eyebrow. Why the brow and not the crease? Okay, if you are going to, say for example, the person, the color that you're going to use to blend against the nose, is that color lighter or darker than the center of the nose? That color is usually lighter. So if you're using a darker color, and if you take that dark color into the person's crease, I mean, don't look like you're fainting. <laughs> now, if you take this dark color, you take the dark color into her crease, suppose she wants to wear a clean nude eye. Then she's going to have what in her crease? A dark, a dark shade in her crease. So then that this person, then their eye um, shadow won't look right. Then on top of it, you're literally cutting the person's face in two. So when you take the color into the crease, you're actually cutting her. So you, you, you see this darkness here, and it comes right into the corner here. So if she wants clean, nude eyes, she can't have that. Now, if you're going to do a smoky eye, and you want to do that, and if you're but the next thing, too, are you taking the smoky eye from corner to corner? If it's a smoke that you're trying to do and the smoke is only like from a uh, center of the eye out, then you're still going to have a dark crease here. So then there's going to be a line of demarcation on the eye. The reason why I take it up into the brows, because the brows, as you see, is one of the darkest areas on your face. So if you take it into the brow, it will be soft and natural and people won't see where to start from stop. Another reason why I take it into the brow is that it will give you a softer, younger look. You won't look hard like you're doing drag. Because mm -hmm. when you take it straight and in, then it looks like a drag queen. If you take it straight up, then it also looks like a drag queen. So either way, you have to remember that you can't do either of those. But if you want that look, hey, go for it. OK. Um, the next question is from Amy, and it's from me. And she's asking, how do you start up as a freelance MUA. Um, me personally, how I started was I started doing makeup for my sister and my friends just to practice and get my skills better. And over time, the more I did makeup for them, the better I got. And when pe when they would go out and people would see their makeup, people would always ask, oh, who did your makeup? Who did your makeup? So word of mouth was kind of like the biggest thing for me. So that just helped people to then come and say, oh, can you do my event? Um, can you do my makeup if they're going for a party or anything like that? And when you have more people coming in for you to play with their faces, you get used to working with different types of faces, and you get better over time. And also, whenever you do anyone's face, make sure you picture the work. That way you're able to put it up on your page, and people see your work. And 
that just helps to create more um, more a bigger audience for you, especially when you have your friends and your family and you have people around you who want to actually encourage you. So the more you put out work, the more people are going to know about you and want to actually work with you. So that's like the easiest way for you to start off as a freelance MUA. And over time, you're going to get weddings. If you are getting better and getting better with your skills, you're going to get weddings and birthdays. And before you know, you're a big time. Yes. That's so how did you get started as a freelance makeup artist? Stop kicking me, Amelia. You gotta answer a question. <laughs> Don't y'all want to hear what Amelia gotta say? Yes. yes. Yeah. Amelia, how did yeah, you Amelia. start as a freelance makeup artist? I started doing makeup on myself and going out in public and look, see straight. I'm just saying. Look into the camera. Started practicing on family and friends. Any phase that I got to make up, I took the chance of doing it, and over a period of time, I perfected it. And here I am doing makeup. Simone, um, I got started as a freelance makeup artist right after I left school, and I had a job the following, I think, two or three weeks after. And that's basically how I started. And as Issa can said, I always put my um, pictures on Facebook. I get calls. I get inquiries. So the social media had a lot, actually, with me um, just pushing um, my career. I was never a freelance makeup artist. <laughs> <laughs> never did anything free or less. <laughs> <laughs> From day one out the box, I got paid to work. Because I was just that fabulous. <laughs> no, really what it is, I started as an educator. And um, I always had a knack. See, I'm a Libra. Born October 14th. All Libras have the same problem. We know to do too many things, extremely creative. So we will do hair, fashion, makeup, clothing. We'll do jewelry. We'll paint buildings. We'll, <laughs> we'll lay bricks. Pretty much anything you could think of, Libras usually know how to do it. And I used to do my very own makeup every single day, very nicely. People thought I was a makeup artist, told me I looked like a makeup artist. So I started believing that I was a makeup artist. <laughs> and then a friend of mine asked me to come and help him and his friends to do some makeup. So when I walked into Soho, it was a drag um, place. Okay. It wasn't a contest, it was a show. And after I took my mouth from off the ground and put it back on my face, I realized that it was the most fascinating thing I have ever seen in my entire life. And one thing, I, I learned a lot from them. Then he told me one time to come and help with their friends to do a fashion show, so I did that. They told me there was money, so I showed up. I got paid, and then one job basically just led to another. But a lot of you who are out there, that are aspiring makeup artists, or you're already a makeup artist, and it's just not happening for you. It's not going to fall in your lap. You are going to have to go out, and you're going to have to create situations to do it. A lot of you, there are tons, as many makeup artists as there is out there, there are photographers that are trying to get noticed and to get known. You need to do some kind of collaboration. Get with people. Get with a photographer. Also, another thing that I recommend to a lot of my students to do, I have literally taught hundreds of thousands of people over the years. And what I recommend for them to do, go to a beauty salon that is extremely busy. They're doing no makeup, no brows, no lashes. And you go and you offer your service in that salon that's already busy. When you do that, you find that you don't have to go out and find customers. Who's there already? The clients are already in the salon. Then what you do, you offer to do all the people that work in the salon brows for no charge and their lashes because they're doing what for you? They're advertising for you. So as they're advertising for you, you then start to do the lashes and the brows of their clientele that's already in the salon. You don't have to go out and find them. They're already there. And then little by little, but if you're doing makeup, the number one thing that will move you from just being one that's struggling to someone that's actually making some money, you need to sell something. I don't care if it's a lipstick, a lip gloss, a pencil, 
but you should never be doing makeup and you're not selling makeup. I don't care whose stuff you sell. I don't care who you buy from. There are so many private label manufacturers out there that you could go find stuff and buy it. Most makeup artists, because you're not licensed, cannot get into the big hair shows or the aesthetic shows. But there's a makeup show. You could get into the makeup show. You could go in there. There are private label manufacturers in the makeup show. You could go and buy your stuff and sell it. Don't let nobody tell you no different. I started selling stuff from the trunk of my car. If I had something on, I like it, I got my purse. <laughs> if I didn't have my purse, I could bring it the next day. But I always sold something. And you find that because you then have that income, you find little by little by little you'll be able to do a lot, lot better. Okay. Next question. Next question is from Jamila. And she says, how do you stop makeup from setting fine lines around your mouth? How old is Jamila? Is Jamila young? Is Jamila older? One of the key ways of, um, there's two ways of stopping makeup from setting around your mouth. Um, first thing is the kind of makeup that you're using is important. But something else, if you have fine lines, instead of trying to fill them up, you could create what we call an illusion. Anything that is darker will receive anything that's lighter will emphasize or look like it's fuller. So what do you do? For um, I've done pretty much over the years, 95% of my clientele were Caucasian women. Um, and they all had the lines right here around the mouth. What I usually do when I put on their makeup, inside the line itself, I would put a foundation color that's like two shades lighter, just in that area. And when I set it, I set it with their own natural powder color. So when you look at it, only myself as an artist would know that this area was lighter. But because it's lighter, it looks like it's pulling towards the person. So it looks as if the area is full and it's not as deep. So sometimes you have to be very careful that when you're powdering, you don't take a darker powder in the area because it's going to make the lines look even deeper. So what you do is make the area, am I making sense? Yeah. Yeah. So if you make the area lighter, it gives the optical illusion that the line is actually full when it is not. So that's the first way to do it. Okay, so next question is from Miss or M828-1978. What is the best way to cover dark circles? I have Bobbi Brown CC Cream and not Creamy Concealer and experience oxidation hours later? Because uh, CC cream is not for dark. Is it a dark circle or dark spot? Dark circle. Okay. Um, dark circles, first of all, you should know what causes dark circle. Dark circle is sometimes caused from um, rupturing of vessels, and some people are born is hereditary. If it's from not sleeping, the dark circles with rest and drinking a lot of water will go away. But what do you use to cover it? The CC cream is a no-no. CC cream is not a, it's a correcting cream, but it is not a corrector. So it, the consistency is not heavy enough for it to cover a dark circle. And what's the other thing she says she has? She says she has the NARS Creamy Concealer. Sometimes the concealer that you're using, the base of the concealer is totally wrong. Um, for example, the line that I use, it has the concealers have warms and cools. Sometimes your undertone might be a cool, and the concealer you're using is also the base of it is cool. So it is not going to warm you up. Or you need something to actually, what we are talking about yesterday in the class, about when you were doing the color theory, is the neutralizing effect. You need a color to neutralize that unwanted color. You have to look closely and see if your dark circle is more blue. Because if it is, if it is more blue, the next two primary colors that are missing would be what? Yellow and red. So your, your concealer should have a orange base. And with the orange base, it will totally neutralize and cancel out the dark circle. Then you have to look if your dark circle is more greenish in tone, then you have to make sure then, then you have to get something more on the, on the red side. 
Then another thing too with it, some people is more purplish. So your the purplish one is more violet. So it's 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 predominantly red and blue. So then it would have to be something more on the yellow base. So sometimes it's not the fact that it is the kind of concealer. It's the fact that you're not using the right base in the color. Because the whole idea of covering a dark circle is that you want to neutralize the unwanted color. And you can only neutralize the unwanted color when all three primary colors are present. So if it's more purple, then you have to go to the total other color that's missing. That's why as a makeup artist, whether you're self-taught or not, you need to pick up a book. You need to pick up a book. And you need to go to the color chart. And you need to learn about color. You need to know about primary colors, secondary colors, your tertiary colors. Because it's the only way, number one, you're going to give the correct unwanted color. Who's typing? I can hear it. Um, that's the number one way, first of all, that you can correct unwanted color. You could neutralize unwanted color. But more importantly, uh, move a little closer to the camera. If you want a color block, you can't color block unless you know how to correct color. And yes, you know how to put colors together unless you know how colors react to each other. So all of the things that you want to do as an artist, you can only do them effective and well if you know about basic things like color, the law of color, knowing what primary colors are, what secondary colors are. These are things that you could Google and learn. So you really, really have no excuse. So sometimes the reason why your product is not working because the base of your product is the wrong color. So we have a question from Jamila again. And she says, what's the best eyeshadow application for hooded eyes? We're going to charge Amelia for questions. <laughs> <from Amelia. laughs> yeah. um, what's the best eyeshadow application for hooded eyes? It all depends on who the lady is. That's a hard question to answer simply because if the hooded eye is from someone young or the hooded eye is from somebody old. Because if they old, not only you have the hooded eye, what you also dealing with? Skin. 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 The sagging skin and hooded eye all at the same time. What I usually do is, is the hooded eye just are the eyes far apart or are the eyes close set or are the eyes in the right place because I can't tell you exactly how to put the shadow on when I don't know what other correction the lady needs am I making sense yeah. because if I tell you how to do it with the eye and the woman has hooded eye but the eyes are far apart then you're gonna put then she's gonna look worse if you I tell you how to fix hooded eye and her eyes are close together so the best thing to do is to either email Amelia or a lyric, <laughs> it's okay. or it's a kid, and send them the picture. <sighs> Not me. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. My face is two shades darker than my neck. How do I find the appropriate foundation for my skin? Her face is two shades, two darker. shades darker than her neck. neck. Or chest area. How the hell I have <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Her face is two shades darker than her neck. How does she find the what? The appropriate foundation for her skin. The appropriate foundation for her skin. Color. You are going to have to, is it two shades or is it? She says it's two type, type in real quick and tell me whose who's makeup you use. Um, if your face is two shades darker than your neck, you cannot do your foundation to match your mm -hmm. face. You have to do your foundation to match your neck. So it takes a little bit of creativity. Um, you, first of all, are going to have to match your foundation to your neck. And then you're going to have to powder. And then you're going to have to do highlights and lowlights. And then it will be perfect. The key, this is where the trick is going to come in. The trick for you is going to be your hairline. You have to make sure that you take it all the way up to the hairline and make sure that it does not get in the hair. So when you're finished doing your makeup, your face and your neck and everywhere will be one consistent color. I would strongly prefer to see what it looked like so you actually could send me the picture. Um, send it to um, Bontricia at Yahoo. I ain't tell everybody to send me a picture. <laughs> I said her. 
because the last time I made that mistake, I got a picture from everybody <laughs> in the whole wide world. I said, I said her. What? Who asked the question? Um, Ekanem. Ekanem, you're the only one that can send me your picture. Send me a picture of what you're talking about, and I will take a look, and then I will have one of them answer. Okay, so the next question is from Simone Sweetness, and she says, please, can you tell me what's the best powder to set the highlight area? I know everyone tries to use the banana powder, but everyone can't wear it. <laughs> Everybody can go on. Right. Everyone can wear banana no. powder. I yeah, have right. never used a banana powder in my entire life. I've eaten a banana. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a banana float. <laughs> I have did weird things with bananas. <laughs> never wear banana powder. <laughs> First of all, what is the base of banana powder? Yellow. 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 What the hell am I doing with some yellow powder on my face? It don't work for everyone. So what I do, the powder that I use to set either highlighted area or low lighted area, whether lighter or darker, my powder is translucent and my powder actually goes along with my foundation. So if the foundation I use is a C3 under my eye, the powder is a C3. If I use a foundation here that's an N10, the powder is an N10. Y'all live in MAC, Make Up Forever, all those places. When you go, you see that they have powders of different color and they're translucent. They have pressed powders of different color. There's a reason. I'm sorry. I am not one of the people who believe that everybody can wear the same thing. I can't wear the same size as Amelia. Amelia, look at me. Look at her. If I stand, if I lean over too far, y'all can't even see Amelia. <laughs> so there is no way Amelia and I can wear the same size. Look at her complexion. Look at mine. Do we look like we could wear the same powder? Yeah. Do we look like she wears some yellow powder, she already yellow. I wear some yellow powder, my face gonna look like a monkey's ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. We all can't wear the same thing. Right. She might get away with some yellow powder once in a while. I'll be seeing her yellow powder night. I see Simone use it too. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say. I see them. I ain't got nothing to say. Hear no evil. Speak no evil. You see no evil. The point I'm trying to make is not everyone. The reason why I stop working for you because not for you. Everything is not for everyone. So if it works for some people, it don't work for everybody. Okay. Next question is um, Hi, Patricia. Can you speak about sanitization? <laughs> Okay. Now, uh, yeah. we, we, we <laughs> sanitization of your brushes. Now, we had this conversation in the class yesterday. She was given a presentation, and she had an unmitigated gall to give a presentation on sanitation to a bunch of, you know, women from America that own 50,000 makeup brushes. <laughs> but when I started out, and I had my two little brushes, just like y'all got y'all two little brushes, because y'all have two little brushes, it's really no excuse not to. Now, when it comes to, and let's take all fun and joke aside, when it comes to sanitation, it's not what you get away with. It's the one time that you get caught. Mm -hmm. It's not what you get away with. It's the one time that you get caught. Because let me tell you something. Not everybody is as clean as we wish them to be. Now, there's something called pink eye, extremely contagious. Mm -hmm. Now, most of our makeup products, when we close them, where are they go in? Somewhere dark, and when then most of them are moist. So darkness and moistness is the number one bacteria breeding agent, is darkness and moistness. So once you, that's why women shouldn't keep their makeup underneath their cabinets in their bathrooms, mm -hmm. because it's too moist and it's too dark. So those are the places that will breed bacteria. It's not the things that you get away with, it's the one time that you get caught. Because then the person is gonna make it their business. And it's not once upon a time when you did something wrong and you do it to Issa Ken 
and then she might tell it to Amelia, and then Amelia might tell it back there to Maria, and it don't get any further. Now they're going to make it their business, they're going to get on social media, they're going to get on every form of social media, and they're going to blast you to heaven. You can't sue them for cyberbullying because it's not bullying, it is the truth. Right. Right. So once it becomes a fact, then it's a problem. But not only that, if you consider yourself a professional artist, it is, it is pretty much mandatory that you should clean your brushes every single evening. And when I say clean, I mean you spit on them and wipe them off like I do. I'm talking about you wash them in warm water and shampoo, squeeze them flat, let them dry, and this way your products will be sanitary and safe for you to use. Not only that, if you wash your brushes with shampoo and warm water, you find that the brush cleaners won't eat them away. The brush cleaners have an alcohol, and even the ones that they say are non-alcohol. The fact that it's coming out of a spray anything, it has aerosol, so it's compacted, that alone eats away at your brushes. I have had some of my brushes longer than I've had my children. And I have children older than all these three women that I'm sitting right next to. I have underwear older than my children. <laughs> older than that one, that one, and that one. Actually totaled up. Okay. I, I have underwear. <laughs> so I've been in the industry a very long time. I've seen a lot of things go very, very wrong. And I'm not talking to you from a high place. I'm talking to you from someone that I've done some crazy stuff. You know, like using hair bonding glue to put on lashes. Mm-hmm. 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 You know who you are. But um, the bottom line is I'm coming. I don't know what y'all do in Nigeria, but when I was there, we had brush sets for everybody. Everybody got clean brushes to use. We had enough products for everybody to use. We didn't have a problem with people using stuff that's contaminated. The other thing is you can't. everybody can't use the same pencil. Um, that's the reason why you sharpen a pencil. Just sharpening the pencil alone, it will actually sterilize the pencil. So if you're going to share the pencil, at least sharpen the pencil before the next person use the pencil. There are certain things that you can't sharpen. Like, for example, um, mascara, dark, moist. You can't use the same mascara on more person than one. Usually if I'm doing a model at a show, I will have a brand new mascara. When I use it on that person, I hand the mascara to the person because I use it directly from the container. Now, if you have to use your stuff more and more and more often, what I would recommend is that you have, I don't use disposables. They're screaming disposables behind me. That's whack. <laughs> I have about 10 mascara spoolies. They're brushes with the mascara one attached to the end. It looks more professional. Then then I could charge you more money because my stuff looks more professional. I don't do disposable anything. I don't use sponges, nothing disposable. Everything, I use actual brushes, but I make sure I have several of the same brush. So this way I can use them, get rid of it. If I know I'm going on a shoot and I'm going to have 30 people, I have 30 of them. You know, at that level, you should be able to have more than one. So instead of buying sneakers and them knockoff purses and them other stuff y'all spend your money on, stop buying makeup and stop buying brushes. They're, they're the tools of your trade. You have enough eyeshadow already, don't buy no more, go buy some brushes. You have enough foundation already, don't buy any more in your, for your makeup case, buy some brushes. You can never have too many brushes, but you sure have too many green eyeshadows. Uh -huh. Okay, quick note, everyone is asking that Amelia speaks, that she's shy, and she's not saying anything. She ain't gonna say nothing. We've been trying all day. We've been trying all night. We've been trying for the last three days. So Amelia, the people said to talk. Come on, look at it. She stuck to the chair. See, I'm pushing her. It's not that we not let her talk. She won't talk. We've tried everything. Amelia? What do you want to know? Something! Okay. okay, let me give you something. Give her a question. Okay, how did you build up your makeup kit to becoming an MUA? How did I? How did you build your makeup kit? How did you build your, your makeup, makeup case? case? By buying different brands and seeing which one works best for me. And the ones that I would use on myself, I would use on my clients. And I build from there. 
why are you poking me in my side? <laughs> she, she, don't poke me. The people asking the question. Yeah, I saw the um, used whatever works best, and the ones that I didn't find was that good. I just put it aside, and I built from there with use different mascaras, different eyeshadow palettes, different foundations, and when I found the one that best suit me, I said it would best suit my clients, so I built my kit on that. So bottom line, people build their kit based upon their preferences. Um, the things that you personally like to use for yourself, you find that that's the thing that you're going to end up, it's your go-to thing. So when you're building your, your makeup, your, your kits, you basically start first, and you're going to do it anyway, start with the things you like. And then if you're real serious about the business, because now it's gone from what you personally like to what works best. So if you're not one that wear makeup, you can't do things based upon what you like. You have to now do things based upon what the market demands. For example, HD is huge now in the market. Right. Have you bought any HD foundations? Have you been using any HD foundations? Because then just the fact that you said that you're doing HD, guess what you could do? You can charge a little more just because you say you do HD. So it moves from when you're starting out. I've been in the business over 35 years. So it started out where I, everything, just like Amelia, you started with what you like. But then you have to go to what it is that other people need other than what you like. We don't have too much longer. What's the next question? There was another question for Amelia. What eyeshadow brands do you prefer? Um, well, I like more of the high-end brands. They work a lot better for me. She should come up one like one. Mm-hmm. So what do you like? Oh, like. Well, today I'm using one of the palettes that would be in my makeup line, and it is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so tell them the name of it. What is it? <laughs> Think Pink. Oh! It's Think Pink. Woo. So that is what Amelia uses. She used that today. And that's what I use, and that's what she used, the um, and she back they use, and <laughs> she back they use, and she use. Because we ain't going to use anybody else's stuff, and Amelia has a makeup line. So yeah. that's what we used. Think pink. It sounds like pinky, but it's really pink. The E is silent. <laughs> <laughs> There's another question here, um, Ms. B. Simone is asking, I'm an aspiring MUA. I currently do friends and other people's makeup. Mrs. Bontricia, do you believe all artists should go to a makeup school to get properly trained? And how do you know yeah. what school is best? Hi, don't ask me what school is best and I'm sitting right here. Listen, on a serious note. All right. Should all makeup artists get trained? Should your doctors be trained? Should your hairstylist be trained? Should your dentist be trained? Should the person doing your brows be trained? Should the person putting on your lashes be trained? Should the people that take care of your children when you've gone to work, should they have training? Now, don't get me wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being self-taught. But if you're self-taught and you're not taught by anything else or anyone else, or exposed to anything else or anyone else, how do you know that you're being your optimum best? How do you know that what you know, you can't know something else? My whole take on it is, just like I tell my students all the time, teach what you know until what you don't know catch up to you. Do what you know until what you don't know catch up to you. But you have to be in the process of trying to learn it. They're not telling me can't yell. You have to be in the process of learning in order for this to happen. You, I strongly recommend, and I'm not just saying to come to me, because there are other people that could teach you other than me. However, what I'm saying is that the smart thing to do is to get trained somewhere. Now, do your research. Um, find out who went there. What did they learn? Um, are they able to use the things that they learned to make a living? 
I recommend strongly that you should take a makeup class, whether it's from um, Simone or whether it's from Amelia or whether it's from Isakin or whether it's from any of the people there in the back, Sharon or Maria or anybody. Anywhere you could go is better than doing absolutely nothing at all. Granted, if you're walking there and they ain't teaching nothing, I tell people, do you have a money back guarantee? <laughs> if I learn nothing, can I get my money back? People ask me all the time, Miss B, if I don't learn anything at your conference, can I get my money back? And I said, if you don't learn it in my class, I will give you your money back. Because, but if you learn more than you thought you were going to learn, you're going to pay me yeah. extra. <laughs> so my whole thing is this. Yes, you should go get training. Because it's, it's one thing to be doing the same thing over and over again, but you want to know why you do things. You want to know why you did that. Why you do that? Why I shouldn't do this? What's going to happen when I do it? Because first of all, makeup is for science before it's art. So if you learn the science of makeup, you'll become a better makeup artist. And the better makeup artist you become, is more comfortable you are with different techniques. You know, Amelia love, 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 love color. But then you have to make sure, is it just color that Amelia is comfortable with or Amelia is comfortable with makeup artistry? Same thing with Isokin. She's comfortable with one thing, but can she do everything? And it's the same with Simone. So when people move from doing makeup to teaching makeup, you know, it's a whole different ballgame. But yes, you should go get trained as a makeup artist. Awesome. There was another question. At the conference, what type of eyelash application is going to be taught, individual or flares? And that's from Juliet. All right, Juliet, I think, Juliet, you asked the same question again. You think I don't know who you are? You asked me that question, but you're asking the question again. So I'm going to answer the question. At the conference, there will be several things that will be taught at the conference. The first thing will be taught is the brow threading. So they do that literally almost first. Then they teach you how to do flares, but then they teach you also how to do individuals. Now, the person who's actually teaching the individual lash extensions at the conference is... Christina Miller. Christina Miller, what we do, we split the group in two. James has one half of the class and he does the threading and he does the flares. Then after lunch, they switch and the next group learns the individuals because we tried it the other way and personally that is the way I prefer it to be done. So this way, if you come to learn individual lashes, you will learn individual lashes. If you come, you learn flares as well, because individual lashes is a totally specialized technique. You, when you come to the conference and you, t and you learn it for pretty much about four hours for that day, practicing on someone else, what happened is that you find that that technique is going to take more training if you're really, 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 really serious. Now, if you're good like me, I'm a visual learner. So I can look at something, see somebody do it, and I catch on. But it's going to take practice. Practice also for you to be able to speed up your time. So you're going to learn the flares, and you're learning individuals, and you're learning brow threading at the conference. Plus, in the individual makeup classes, we teach you how to put strip lashes on. So every single lash technique that you could use is taught at the conference. They want to know who everybody in the room is. There are a lot of people in the room. Oh, y'all knows it. Okay. <laughs> everybody in the room, I have a team. Now, everybody that's here is here for the instructor training. These are the people, or these are some of them. There's actually more. It's just that they all couldn't fit in my house at one time. <laughs> so these are the people that are actually going to be traveling with me all over the world to work at the different conferences. Also, these are the people that's going to come to you, to your individual smaller areas that we can't bring a makeup conference to come and teach the boot camp classes. I can't come everywhere. I am one person, and other than for the conferences, I have other obligations that I have. However, um, we'll start over here. Um, we'll have you stick your head in. You can't see her head, but that's Big Head Dana. <laughs> she is the, the computer brain. She's the computer brain of us all. Her head, her head is big. She ain't got no makeup on. 
She ain't no makeup hi. artist. That's Dana. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Hi, hi. Dana is the computer witch. She does all of our um, IT. all of our IT. All of our. So anytime anything's wrong with the competition, it's Dana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anytime y'all can't do anything, it's Dana. <laughs> anytime something's spelled wrong, it's Dana. <laughs> Every time something really really good, it's Dana. When it's really really bad, it's Dana. This is Isakin. She a little hard headed, you know. She move a little slow. We've been praying on her, you know. She show up, you know. Her head is in fifteen different places, you know, because she a beast. We actually have the same birthday. It's October the fourteenth. So just because she's a Libra, I put her on the team. That don't mean everybody out there that's a Libra said me on It's no. So this is Isakin. She's a part of the team that travels all over the world with me. Of course, this is no talk lady. I don't know how the hell she's going to teach nobody when she don't talk. We're going to have to put a battery in her back and, you know, and act like she's talking. It's not me talking a lot. She pretty much, we had to drag her up the stairs for her to come to talk. Look at her, she look at she going faint. I ain't say for her to say nothing. All I'm talking is talking about her and she's going to die. <laughs> and of course, that one talked too much. That is that is Simone Henry, Miss um. Oh, Mrs. Henry. <laughs> she the only one that have a husband. Ain't nobody else in the room. It seems have a husband. Mrs. Henry, I've been Mrs. a lot, a lot of times, and y'all don't hear me say Mrs. 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 <laughs> Mrs. But this is Mrs. Razak. This is Mrs. Henry. So this is Simone. Y'all know as Larry. Peek your head over, um, Cliffany. Cliffany, hey. Cliffany is another Libra. Um, yes. I don't just hire Libras. You know. <laughs> I hire other people. Amelia ain't a Libra. She'd be better if she was a Libra. She loves. But, yeah, but she all right. <laughs> then there's Cliffany. She is an airbrushing beast. She is, yeah. Head a little small, though. <laughs> you know, head a little small, she kind of smart. So we're not going to hold a little head against her. Then, of course, y'all know Miss um, S.C. Wint. Yeah. Um, Miss Sharon, um, Miss Levy, push your head forward. So, so that's that. There is a teaching beast. Don't, yeah. don't be fooled. Yep. Huh? <laughs> Her. She the only one I'm kind of concerned about because she kind of know a little something. She a little slow. She from the country. So I'm a little ahead of her. I'm good. Her birthday is also October 14th. <laughs> ten years apart. So ten years. <laughs> Anybody have to know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's 10 years older. <laughs> her birthday is also October the 14th. I didn't choose her because of her birthday. It's just what happens that after I chose them, I found out what their birthdays were. You know, it's the law of attraction. Crazy knows. <laughs> yeah. Then of course over there is Miss Maria Moore. Hi. Maria, lean forward with your big head. <laughs> yeah, Maria, she Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. She is crazy. <laughs> she's crazy, but she's the airbrushing beast. Maria works for Showtime, Cinemax, HBO, MTV. Everything that you ever dreamed that you ever want to learn and know. Crazy over there can teach it to you. For that matter, Maria's gonna be teaching the rest of the team to airbrush, except of course me. <laughs> I need to learn nothing because what do I want to grow be when I grow up? Nobody. <laughs> then of course Rima hiding there in the back somewhere. Rima, put your big head forward. Say hello, Rima. Hello. Rima is the Miss Retail herself from the House of Tara International. She came all the way from Nigeria for the class. She is a oh, girl. She is a brow god. Mm -hmm. This girl could do some brows. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nigeria, you know how serious y'all about it, y'all brows. Real serious about brows. Brows in Nigeria is like life here. You can't do no brows in Nigeria. You ain't no makeup artist. First time they showed a picture of my Nigerian girl, said, I'm sorry, madam. You don't make up artists. Your brows are too smart. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's regular brows and there is Nigeria brows. Nigeria, I respect your brows. I ain't got nothing to say. I just have a problem when they're one brow. 
<laughs> I just browse. have a problem when the browser is two inches and one inch wide. Mm -hmm. Other than that, girl, do you, boo? We don't have a problem. And of course, everybody got to have a guy in the room. He is from <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> so I do take them from all over the place. No, he not a Libra. He'd be better off if he was. <laughs> but you know, for now, we're going to deal with him. So now that your nosy ass know who everybody is in the room, <laughs> we have two more questions and then we're done. Okay, I'm going to squeeze a bunch of them into one. When She's trying to squeeze a bunch yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you come into Australia, Atlanta, and London. When am I coming to Australia, Atlanta, and London? We are coming to London March the 29th to the 31st. I already signed the contract. It's 1,295 pounds. I wish it could be less. But when I got the quotes from about 17 hotels in London, all my hair fell out. <laughs> every strand and you give free. went. Right. Because when I tell you everything that it costs us in the United States to do anything, it costs the same thing in London but in pounds. Mm -hmm. There are hotel rules. Now, one young lady sent me an email and said, Miss Bontresha, London will cost less if you have it in a less expensive hotel. That is not true. I have, re I have got quotes from 17 hotels, and the dumps wanted sometimes just maybe 2,000 more pounds than somewhere nice. And to be very honest with you, I would never have my conference somewhere where I wouldn't stay. I can't take these people from their husbands and their families and take them to a dump. I would never, ever do that. I would never put them in a situation where I would not want to be. If I wouldn't stay there, Amelia husband, crazy. <laughs> Simone husband, crazy. Maria husband, crazy. Yeah. Sharon husband don't talk much, but he walks with a big stick and a big gun. <laughs> Tiffany, she got some crazy boyfriend of hers. The ex husband she's trying to get rid of, him. he's still crazy. No, and, and, and she don't have to buy <laughs> about to go deal with no Nigerian father. Uh, no, 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 what no, happened no, to his no. daughter? And I ain't dealing with no more Nigerian parents asking about <laughs> their daughter. And I ain't dealing with no whoever he got. <laughs> and I met his sister, that's Spanish Mexican, crazy. So I would never ever take them into a situation where I would not want to be. So yes, the conference is not cheap. I wish it was because then I, the only difference I could make if everybody could email me that want to come to London and say they wanted no lunch, uh, I would cancel the lunch and I could make the conference maybe, how much was the lunch costing us? About about 30 pounds per day, about 33, 30, 30. It cost me about 100 pounds just for lunch. So if y'all don't want lunch, I could take off 100 pounds and y'all bring your own lunch every single day. But if I'm going to give you lunch, I have to leave it what it is. Now as for Australia, I, we're trying to put the fielders out for Australia if we can get enough interest. If there's people out there that's interested in Australia, you could email me at bontrisha at yahoo.com. And if the numbers look right, we will definitely, definitely um, look into doing Australia maybe sometime in September of next year. You asked me about what other place? Atlanta. Atlanta. We are looking to go into Atlanta maybe around April around April of next year we're looking to do Atlanta we're looking for the venue right now um, we're definitely gonna do hey Ghana you know enough of you emailed me so now when I post a flyer I won't hear no foolishness all of a sudden madame me not have no money <laughs> madame gonna be pissed <laughs> madame went and got a hotel so we're looking to do Ghana late January so hey, 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 happy dance, jump up and down, spin around in a circle. We finally gonna do Ghana. I'm gonna try and bring as many of my team with me as possible. Y'all know y'all place expensive and y'all know airfare costs a lot. So it might be about me and my dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um let's make this happen, let's make this work. We are doing um we're doing Toronto. 
but I can't give you a date. It ain't nowhere close. Yeah. No, I'm lying. It's July of next year. So we're doing Toronto in July of next year. Um, we're going to be posting um, the information real soon. And pretty much, yeah, Amelia um, has her makeup line that we're going to be launching at the conference in Trinidad. I am excited for her. Um, yeah, thanks, I am, I am excited for her. She wore her pink today to represent Pink Pink. I do well in pink, so I give a damn. I don't need no pink. <laughs> so, <laughs> she, we're going to be launching it at the conference. We're actually going to be using it at the conference, and she will have it for sale after the conference. She have a whole full makeup line and a whole full brush line. I support all of my people everywhere we go. Um, if it was Jamaica, it would be Sharon. If you know, if it's Louisiana, it would be Cliffany. I don't know this one. Don't know where she want to be. She <laughs> in too many places. That one don't know where she want to be. She in too many places. Crazy Maria in Jersey. That one in Seattle. I ain't going no damn Seattle. <laughs> What's in Seattle? Sleepless oh, in Seattle. Oh, they go sleepless. <laughs> and I'm going to Nigeria. We're going to Nigeria. Also, what we're going to be doing, the House of Tara is going to be going to be using all of the makeup. They have some awesome new stuff. They have some awesome pigments. Oh my God, hot to death. Maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> then they have this awesome new foundation awesome new powders and because it's so awesome we're going to be using it in Ghana um, it's going to be just be awesome I'm looking to do something in Abuja um, don't know where it is <laughs> don't know how to find it but Rema keeps saying Miss B Abuja got people too and yeah 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 I'm seeing the Abuja dance yeah we're going to be doing something in Abuja as well um, I'm going to plan it soon um, we're going to do like a boot camp there you know, so y'all don't have to fly into Lagos. Lagos people always get all the imagery. We're going to mm -hmm. give you all the love instead. That's Rima's fault. So Lagos people, <laughs> blame her. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't even know where it is. All I know, the plane take me there and drop me off and tell you we home. Mm -hmm. So pretty much that's what we're going to do. What else are we supposed all to be right, talking last about? One, Cara asked on Instagram about the, Lagos, the Las Vegas um, conference. She wants to know. She's excited. And she just wants to know if there's an itinerary yet. Girl, we ain't got an itinerary yet. I don't even know what I ate yesterday. But I'm going to tell you this. The Vegas conference, hot to death. I already picked yes. out my dress to the party. It's a little slinky. Ooh. Too many things are going to be showing. What is Vegas? Who gives a damn? She can't wear this church lady outfit to Vegas. <laughs> all this fabric, all this fabric. Fabric all the way up to her neck. Even I'm naked than her. And I'm old. Ten years younger than Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years younger than Sharon, but I'm old. Now, something that I want to make very clear. The conferences, we're going to be having several of them. But all of the, all the folks that are in smaller areas, like Grenada, um, St. Lucia. Lucia, Antigua, uh -huh. Barbados, um, people that are in South Kakalaki, North Kakalaki, those places where it's a smaller group of you. Then, of course, South Carolina, North Carolina, y'all can come on over to, to Atlanta. Y'all ain't got no excuse. You can start walking from now and get your time for the conference, no problem. But for the smaller places, smaller areas that I know you guys want training, you can't leave to get training. What these ladies are going to do is that we're going to start posting dates of when they're actually going to be in your cities to do your classes. Now, if it ain't like 30 or 40 of you, they ain't coming. I'm letting y'all know right now. They're high end, especially this little one. <laughs> she expensive. <laughs> You know, spoil rotten, youngest of like 27 children. <laughs> Everybody in our family, a doctor and a lawyer. And then they let her just do what she want. No no discipline. What you want? Today she want to be a nurse. Tomorrow she want to be a makeup artist. Next day she want to be a designer. She got some nice clothes. Mm -hmm. You ever seen them? Except I've been trying to buy about 10 of them and I can't even get one. And I got money. That's because she's always what? So sold, sold out. out. Mm. What's that about? 
she needs to step make more things. Don't y'all agree with me? I yes. agree. See? Yes. Now, so pretty much, they're going to be coming to your cities. We're going to be posting. And then I hope, um, trust me, they're good. Because if they weren't good, they can work with me. Pinky, you have anything else to say before you faint? She said no. <laughs> Simone, you have anything to say? Um, no, I just think it was really good. Simone is having classes, guys. Y'all need to support her. I know she hit her head a couple times, <laughs> but she's really kind of smart still. You know, otherwise she would be on the team. I know what this one doing. We gonna pray. <laughs> I think she know what she doing. We can answer one last question, and then we gotta go because we got a class to do. Uh, after in the comments, Lulu says, "When is the next Q and A? Love meeting all of you, seeing you in London. Thank you." We all know it's busy. We all know they're busy. They're big shots now. <laughs> you you know. I had to pay them to come. <laughs> and if you believe that, you believe anything. Yeah. <laughs> some of them did. Some of them did. <laughs> but the thing is, it's really difficult to get all of them in one place. The only reason I can get them in one place or for the conference, I got something called a contract and I got a lawyer. <laughs> My lawyer is a beauty lawyer that is it's called the beauty lawyer on Instagram. She's actually my sister. She's the beast. She she's what they call Olivia Pope. She the real Olivia Pope. <laughs> she fixes it. She can fix anything. So we don't know when the next Q and A is gonna be. Um, when I do, I will um, post it. Let you know. I know it won't be no time soon. Um, Dana's riding me like a rented mule about doing online classes. Ah, uh, I'll think about it. Um, simply because I know that there is so many of you that ain't no way you can ever afford a conference. You can ever afford to come to a conference. But you still need certification and you still need teaching. So when I could figure out how I can train you where I can sleep at night, knowing in my heart and in my soul that you've learned everything necessary for you to learn, for me to hand you a certificate and be able to look into my God's face and say, I didn't rob you your money. When I figure that out, I will let you know. But until then, stay safe, be good, say bye. 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 Bye.